Hey, and welcome to the Better Divorce Podcast. You may already know who I am, but just in case you don't, and this is the first episode you are listening to, my name is Paulette Rigo. As the host of the Better Divorce Podcast, the author of the Better Divorce Blueprint, and credentialed family law mediator and certified divorce coach, and founder of Better Divorce Academy. Many of my clients are terrified of dating when they get to that point in the conversation about getting through the divorce or even planning for their marriage to end. There's so much fear in ending a relationship and now there's even more fear about beginning a new one. So today I'm welcoming an amazing expert, Bella Gandhi. She is the founder and creator of the Smart Dating Academy. I love the name. It kind of goes really well with Better Divorce Academy, right? Smart Absolutely. Dating Academy, <laughs> like kindred spirits. So uh, Bella is a nationally acclaimed dating and relationship expert. So with no further ado, welcome to the show, Bella. Paulette, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here today and to talk about dating after divorce. It's such a needed topic. And I've interviewed other dating experts and everybody has a different perspective from, I just sit and listen because this is not my expertise at all. I'm remarried. Um, I was in a long-term marriage, very young. Um, my dating experience consists of high school. Does that count? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. well, you know, I mean, it, it's not like you swipe left and right when you're 14 and we didn't even have any of that stuff. So um, got married young um, and then remarried. So people ask me about dating and I go, you know what? I can't really help you with that, but I know many people that can. But let's start with Smart Dating Academy. What is it and what do you do and how do you help people? So think about Smart Dating Academy as learning the fundamental dating and relationship skills that we all should have learned, to your point, Paulette, back in high school, how to pick good partners, how to be good partners. And then we've added in all of the interesting things that might have you shaking in your boots. What apps do you get on? How do you get on one? How do you know that someone isn't a narcissist or an avoidant, this kind of this time around. So what we do is we become like the personal trainers to your love life. We make it fun. We make it feel safe and we make it feel exciting. And we've had zero divorces in 15 years since I founded the company for people that follow our process. Well, that is quite the track record, my dear, because 15 years, if you look at the statistics, right? Um, yeah. And I know some people argue with me about how many first marriages and then divorce. And again, everyone knows I'm not pro-divorce. One more time, I am not pro-divorce. It's part of life. I, I think that many people are dumbfounded with the, the fact that many marriages do end in divorce. It is a statistic. But if you look at that, um, just the numbers, it, it's going to happen, right? I mean, to some people, right? Um, and how do you learn from those mistakes and not repeat the pattern? That's right. That's right. And so much of this comes down to family of origin trauma, early relationship trauma. Maybe you had great parents. Maybe you just chose bad guys or bad women in high school. So there's a lot of things and society doesn't make it any easier telling us things like we have a three date rule and you know, on the fourth date, he should be cooking you dinner. And there's so many misnomers that start out when we're young. I almost say if you're in a happy, healthy marriage, the first time it, most people will say, man, that was sheer luck. Well, that is true. I mean, I think um, when I speak to people who have, you know, they, I keep a relationship with clients over the years, naturally, as I know you do too. Um, and when you've been in business for 15 years, as you have, you form an, uh, a tribe, right? A community, if you will. And you, you get to kind of live through their experiences a little bit with success stories. And as you said, you haven't had any divorces. So that that is amazing because if, if you're looking at 15 years with marriages or relationships and not having that, well, you're kind of breaking the statistics. That's right. 
That's so right. why do you think that is? What What is the secret sauce to your success? So we work with clients to really understand what kind of partners make them happy. And for women that are looking for men, we call them high GPQ partners, high and good partner qualities. And so we have a very different methodology for helping people to create that list of what's good for them, what makes them happy. So I think that's a really important part of what we do is that special process. Mm -hmm. Then we have lists of red flags that we've created that you see from date zero, which is when you're looking at online dating apps and profiles and messaging all the way to six months of exclusivity. And I think the secret sauce to your point is that we're along the ride, along with our clients, three times per month where we are in their inboxes with them, helping them message. They have dating scorecards. We have graphs as to what healthy relationship trajectories look like. And so following this program and having a really encouraging, supportive, direct guide, which is what we are, has really been the key to the success of our clients. That's fascinating. So you're in their inboxes with them in, in some ways dating with them. I don't mean they're going to dinner with them or having conversations, but you're, you've got a partner where they're holding, you're holding their hand or locking arms with them and kind of walking through the fire. So they feel supported and um, able to make smart choices and smart communication uh, strategies, because sometimes what you say uh, might be the, shall we say, the the success or failure of a, of a dating relationship. Totally. And I mean, I, you know, I can, you can look at my phone. It's so <laughs> funny. Like two minutes before we got on this podcast, I had a client say, Bella, Eric, the scientist asked me out for a date on Friday and Monday. What do I say? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? Be positive right now, accept the dates And if Friday doesn't go well, you can always cancel Monday, Mm. right? And so this is a very successful professional business owner. But when we get thrown into the dating world, we don't know what to do. Mm. And so this, our clients kind of have us on speed dial about these things. So it's great. And it just makes you feel like, oh, I can breathe a sigh of relief because I don't have to navigate this alone. You don't have to rely on your friends and your family for advice in this arena because as well-intentioned as they are, Paulette, you know, and I know they don't know. They can tell you their own experiences, but they don't know from an absolute value standpoint, should you do this or should you not do this? And that's where we come in. It sounds a lot like some of the work I do when I wear my hat of being a divorce coach, uh, where they the questions they ask me to, I, I won't read them because they're personal, but um, it's not like, oh, Eric, the scientist asked me to dinner, you know, <laughs> although that sounds really uh, interesting how he asked for a date on two nights, right? At first, I thought you meant one or the other, like you pick, like heads or tails, yeah. He asked for two, yeah. and, but if you think about it, put yourself in Eric's shoes, right? If you ask somebody out for a Friday and a Monday and you had two interesting activities to do, if someone said, nah, let's just see how Friday goes, it just puts a little bit of a negative tinge on it. So here Perfect. it's okay to say, you know what? That sounds amazing. See how Friday goes. If it's yeah. not amazing, you can always decide to go left at that point. Yeah, you've got a plan. You've got a plan A and plan B, and you and you can adjust. It isn't written in stone. So, for someone that is through the divorce process, or you know, sometimes it isn't as uh, cut and dry as it it ends on June first. You know, it doesn't quite end that way. But for somebody that's starting to contemplate getting back in the pool, or you know, dipping their baby toe in the water. Uh, we could probably use a lot more analogies, you know, but getting back into it, it it's a little bit um, daunting, intimidating, overwhelming for some. But with with the all of your years of experience, how does someone create that dating plan or shall we say blueprint to, to get back into it so that they have less anxiety and fear and that they feel confident? I think the key thing is, is to your point, most people don't have a plan. <laughs> they they so finish true. up with divorce, so 
right? And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, there's all these free dating apps out there. Wait, I just need to put a picture up and I could be on a date tonight. Famous last words. That's what <laughs> happens, right? And what what ends up happening is there's what we call, and I'm a finance person by education, some regression to the mean. Why do second marriages dissolve at the rate of 67% if first marriages dissolve between 40 to 50%? And it's because we end up feeling more comfortable with people that were like our exes because we're accustomed to that. And so when you don't have this sort of armor of information around you and somebody pulling at your elbow going, no, 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 that's a red flag. That's These are the things that happen in the dating world. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I feel like that's me then the best thing to do is to reach out, you know, form a support group, get a dating coach, call Smart Dating Academy, whatever it is, but don't do this on your own because the data show that we tend to do the same thing all over again because human beings, we're creatures of comfort. So many people that you feel chemistry with when you start dating are going to actually, it's just familiarity. It reminds you potentially of the great feelings you had for your ex or your exes in the beginning. This is a fascinating world that we live in. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about those mistakes or red flags or repetitive behaviors, right? If you're um, in a relationship in your early part of your life and you're getting engaged and married. And even if it's, it could be healthy, might not be, but you know, it becomes, as you said, familiar, comfortable, right? Something you're familiar with, something you know. And if the marriage ends for whatever reason, and we know there are many, many reasons why marriages do fail or end. If you're getting back into it, yes, we don't want to repeat the pattern or the same type of mistake that we made prior. Um, And it's also interesting because we also play a part in the demise of the relationship. It isn't all any one person's responsibility or fault or blame, right? We both play a part in the demise of the relationship. And we're not keeping score. Is it ever 50-50? I don't know. I've never asked. But, you know, is it 99-1? Who knows what the percentage is? But listen. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> that is so true. It, let, listen up, everybody. You have to at least admit, like, what is it? What part is it that you played in it? But putting that aside, and that's a lot of the work that you do on you, too. But now you're back into it. What are those little red flags or what I call deal breakers in, in new dating relationships that you should really look out for so that you cannot repeat those patterns? Yeah, I mean, it's somebody that seems really flaky. Or with my clients at Smart Dating Academy, I have them when they're on dating apps and we do their photos for them. I wrote a book that creates the perfect online profile. So we've managed all of the steps in online dating as well. Regardless of where you live, we have a photo studio, people fly in. So after that, we're really watching each person. So I think the first thing you can do is if you're on the apps, if you feel that somebody has a negative tone in their profile. Or here's a good one. If they say, I'm not looking for drama, that's a red flag to me. Sometimes it means I'm going to be the person that's going to cause you drama. Right. Right. So just the fact that they use that word, you're saying kind of brings up the connotation. So that I will cause drama. So yeah, I don't like anybody that is like, please do not contact me if, and especially as women and we can be people pleasers, right? And coming like, oh, I'm not, I'm not a drama queen. I'm employed. I'm this, even though they're ranting negativity, it's not okay for somebody to say, please do not contact me if, please make sure your photos are recent. Who are, uh, I don't like any of that kind of negativity. And I'll tell you what, we over 15 years, we've gathered a lot of anecdotal data that says stick to people that sound positive and keep their commitments. If you ask them, for example, I'll have my clients, I'm like, I don't want to waste your time. My goal in dating is to protect your energy. So don't go straight from texting somebody in the app to a date. Either have a phone call or better yet, do a video date before you agree to meet the person out. 
Now, where does that person that you're communicating with red flag themselves? If they say, no, I don't like to do that. I just want to get straight to the date and decide if there's chemistry here. That's a red flag. If somebody, if you ask somebody to do a phone call or a video in today's day and age, how easy that is, 15 to 20 minutes, if they're not willing to oblige such a basic request. Sure. What kind of a partner do you think this person is going to be five or 10 years from now? No comment. <laughs> That's a, that tells me everything I need to know, Paula. No comment. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that perfect online profile. Are there certain thing boxes that need to be checked? Well, you want to be positive. You want to be specific. Think about yourself as this beautiful quilt, right? From the time you were born until today. And you've got all these little squares, which are your experiences that have been sewn together. What you want to think about is the fun, quirky ones that make you, you, right? Think about what you're going to write in your profile as, you know, fun things that you could say about yourself at a cocktail party. Like you wouldn't believe this about me. And what you're doing, you don't have to tell your life story in your online profile. What you want to do is just throw out some fun, positive conversation starters about you. You know, in fifth grade, I won the spelling bee. In high school, I was the hula hoop champion right? I've been to 67 countries. I make killer margaritas from scratch. Things that give people a really visual image of who you are, show versus tell in your profile. Instead of saying something like, I'm fun, how, what does fun mean to you? Right, exactly. It's not a list of adjectives that you think you are about you. It's demonstrative examples of your life experiences, as you eloquently put it, as a square and a quilt. So, yeah. yeah, and you're not boring. If you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, I've been a stay-at-home mom. I'm boring. I don't have this. I'm going to tell you what. I can elicit the juice out of your life and the fun things you've done. You are not boring, my dear listener. You have so many amazing things that are unique to you that only you've done, what you have to do is sit down and dig a little deep, right? And think about what are the most adventurous things I've done? How was I feeling when I did them, right? What are some quirky things? If you had to play two truths and a lie, how would you play that? So you just have to think about yourself from a creative strategic way. Mm. Well, the, one of the problems I see is that depending on how contentious or difficult the divorce is, not everyone's is, but uh, it, if it is, it can tend to leave a mark um, on the drama, right? The trauma, shall we say, just the experience itself can be very heavy and it tends to leave a mark on someone's confidence. Uh, self-confidence is low, even self-respect is low. They, they feel like they've done something wrong or that they are failed and they don't have that confidence to necessarily see those exciting, interesting, quirky parts of their quilt. Uh, they just see it as I, my marriage failed. I'm a loser. You know, we could go on for hours with all the negative things people say about themselves because of the, the divorce um, or the breakup too. It doesn't always have to be a divorce. It can just be a breakup, which can sometimes be as emotional. Yeah. So building that confidence back up and, and having them, or and some people building a confidence that they truly never had because okay. of family of origin reasons too. Uh, it, it's not always, um, you know, a quick fix having them truly feel excited about living, looking forward to the next chapter of their lives, that it feel unencumbered from the burdens of the past and to let go of so many old stories that are no longer serving them and to start to move into a part of their life that is really liberating and freeing. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough conversation sometimes that I have with people about, yes, it is the end, but it's also the beginning of something so glorious and so beautiful. You can't even imagine waking up in the morning and feeling unburdened from the past of a, a failed relationship and bringing that to the table of a new dating partner is really what someone else is looking for. I don't think anybody wants to date somebody 
with a steamer trunk of um, past burdens. Yeah. And here's the thing. Even if you have that steamer trunk of past burdens, look at everybody around you with invisible steamer burdens on them. We're all carrying around carry-on pieces of luggage or, hell, huge trunks. You just can't see them. And that's what happens to us decade over decade. So remember, your luggage is neutralized by their luggage. We all have it. And so now, to Paulette's beautiful point, if you have these negative tapes and negative stories in your head. I'm not good enough. I'm not attractive enough. I've had women show up to our first consultation, which is three hours, and they're wearing these black sacks, right? Very big, baggy. And I said, why, why are, why are you wearing that? Hmm. And she said, and this woman maybe was a size two. (laughs) And she said, Well, she says, well, I've just, you know, my ex-husband always told me how fat I am. And I said, first of all, that's horrendous. Second of all, it's so untrue. Mm -hmm. And so we helped her to get rid of these messages and helped her with her personal style to rebuild her confidence again. So I know so many of you listening may be victim to these kinds of negative messages. You're nothing without me. You're never going to find someone better than me. You're going to be an old spinster on your own. You're not attractive enough. Guess what? Those are all scare tactics. I promise you that is not the case. I promise you that when you want People call me a psychotic optimist. Love exists for every single person that wants it on earth. It's a when, not an if. And if you feel that little glimmer in your gut right now that says, I think love is out there for me. I might be scared, but I think love is out there. Then it is. And get excited because as you move through this dark tunnel of divorce and you feel like, oh my gosh, it's never, I'm I'm walking through the tunnel of fire. I promise you. Every person that I work with says the sun is starting to come out again because the dark clouds have lifted. The dark clouds of divorce have lifted. So once you, you know, work with someone like Paulette who helps to vaporize those clouds, there is sunshine on the other end and a pot Mm -hmm. of gold at the end of the rainbow with happy, healthy love. Mm -hmm. In fact, someone, you know, two weeks ago, There was a piece that one of my former clients who actually was trying to get certified as a divorce coach, decided to go back into advertising, had been divorced twice. She wrote an article called, you know, and it was very clickbaity for the Huffington Post. Like, I, you know, I invested $15,000 and here's what I learned about my dating life and myself. And so she had been through two divorces and was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can invest in a coaching program. And not only did she find the perfect lid to her pot, but also how much you can learn about yourself during the dating process. And what's more magical than that? Beautifully said. And don't uh, take her advice, um, uh, um, you know, with a grain of salt. Uh, She is so smart and a sought after uh, correspondent and works with major networks. Uh, there's nowhere that people haven't seen or read something about Bella's work and Smart Dating Academy. So listen to what she's saying. You are worthy and you do deserve uh, a new life with the partner. And will it take a little while to find Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright or Mr. Yes. Wright or, you know, right? Absolutely. It isn't like you just, you know, go bowling with the first person you meet them <laughs> or, you know, back in the day or have pizza with somebody and yeah that's it so it's it's uh kind of like going to a buffet you know you're gonna taste a little and try this and realize you know maybe i'm not gonna eat that again the last time i ate that i didn't feel too well and maybe i'm gonna you know you know you you gotta be willing to try something new and it's so important listen up so what's the best way for people to learn more about you follow you learn the best way to work with you and reach out to you 
Yeah. So there's a lot of ways. If you liked, and I loved doing this show with you, Paula, you're amazing. I also have a show, um, a podcast with probably 150 episodes called the Smart Dating Academy podcast. So if you like, you know, you want more dating advice, you want more inspiring stories, um, we give a lot of advice, have a lot of experts and the favorite love story or the favorite episodes are love stories where every month a client comes back that's found mm -hmm. love to tell their love story, to inspire people that love exists for them. And she was just like you when she came out of divorce. So you can check out the Smart Dating Academy podcast. Please sign up for our newsletter. Go to smartdatingacademy.com. And if you're interested in working together, you can also say so there. And follow us on Instagram. We post a couple of times a day, all sorts of dating, witty things, serious things, funny things. So Smart Dating Academy on Instagram. Mm, beautiful. I like to hear stories of success because it can get very daunting when people are only like, oh, I gave up on dating. It's not worth it. I never want to date again. And I always am mystified with how many people when I meet them, especially after they've mediated and come to an agreement. And I'm optimistic to see the two of them co-parenting well. And we start to talk about the children and introducing someone new into the picture and how they're going to agree on a period of time that that might be appropriate. You could see how that might be a co-parenting dating question too. And, you know, I always throw out this statistic. I said, well, I know both of you think I'm crazy, but 85% of divorced people are remarried with Within five years, and they both go, well, that won't be us. But you know, <laughs> but lo and behold, um, they pick up the phone or go to Bella's website and uh, realize that dating is um, is part of the equation of moving on. Doesn't necessarily mean remarriage, but it could. Right. You never know, right? right? Right. I mean, the fact that you're listening to this podcast and you've been listening to Paulette's amazing wisdom over this time, the good news is, is there is more help that's mm -hmm. out there through every phase of this. And remember, you're worth investing in. You are worth all of it. Think about how much we spend on our kids and, you know, as, as mothers, as women, even over our aging parents. And if you have that message in your head, I'm not worth this investment, you are. You are. And everyone needs to know that they're worthy before, during, and after divorce. So thank you're you, Bella. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed this conversation. It's an important conversation. Uh, getting back into the dating scene after divorce is such a common fear. And I thank you for sharing your wisdom and your years of experience um, and helping so many people uh, date wisely. Um, it's an important uh, check to to, to, to have on your list of things to do after divorce. It, it's, uh, it's a necessity. Um, I am, unfortunately, uh, I see more people hold off. They either jump in too fast and they're, you know, back into the fr frying pan, as they say, immediately, or they hold off a long, long, long time, um, when they feel, uh, stuck. So it's nice to know that there are experts out there that can help you. So everybody listen, it can be a better experience. Make it better. Until next time, talk to you soon.